Welcome aboard Limanja, a custom 76 foot steel explore yacht built by Bering Yachts. This unique vessel is the only one of its kind built by Bering Yachts and was delivered at the beginning of the year. Since its delivery, the vessel has logged thousands of nautical miles and has transited across the Bay of Biscay. During this transit, the boat encountered a heavy swell with wind conditions gusting up to 45 knots. Today, I will show you around this unique boat, including, of course, giving you a full tour of the engine room and the wheelhouse. So make sure that you stay tuned. And I'd like to say a huge thanks to the owner for letting me step aboard and for bearing yachts for facilitating the visit. Before I show you around, please don't forget to give the video a like and also don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. The more subscribers we get, the more boats we can get on. Having boarded the boat via the sizeable swim platform and entered the cockpit via the starboard boarding gate, I'm going to give you a quick tour of the upper deck before taking you inside the boat. It is worth mentioning that the weather today is absolutely howling and that there are some other people on board as the boat undergoes some general maintenance. So this video will have a similar feel to the videos that I film when I am at boat shows. As we emerge onto the foredeck, you will immediately notice a U-shaped seating area currently protected from the downpour and a table that provides a great location for socializing with guests. Passing the seating area, we arrive at the bow. Anchoring is a breeze with dual 100 kilogram Paul N stainless steel anchors, each accompanied by 125 meters of high load zinc coated 14 millimeter chain. Shortly, we will be heading up to that raised pilot house. Note also the large LED searchlight and the large radar on the radar mast. I really like the protection afforded by the high gunnels up here, which flare out to minimize the amount of spray coming over the foredeck when you're battling through those big waves. As you saw during the intro, the owner has already encountered some fairly gnarly conditions when he was heading north through the Bay of Biscay after leaving the Mediterranean. When I asked the owner about how the boat handled the conditions, he explained to me that she took the waves incredibly well and that the gyro stabilizer on board worked well at keeping the boat as steady as possible, bearing in mind the conditions which they faced. As we emerged back into the cockpit area, the thing that stood out to me was just how much space there was here, considering the LOA of the boat. On the port side of the cockpit is this serving area, complete with a fridge and some additional storage space. The fresh water maker on board is a pontoon HPSC 140 volt water maker that can produce 3360 litres a day. On the right hand side of the serving area is a sink with a hob and a grill on the left. What a great place to enjoy some al fresco dining assuming of course that you aren't being battered by the rain and the winds. Anyway, it's time to retreat from the nautical conditions and head inside, starting with the spacious saloon. Opposite the large retractable TV is an L-shaped seating area, surrounded by lots of large reinforced windows, giving you great views of the surrounding seascape, or in this case, the marina. The aircon in here has an incredible capacity of 36,000 BTU. As we continue forward, we arrive at the open concept galley. On this particular Bering 76, the owner opted for an open layout rather than isolated compartments. This design choice fosters a sense of community on board. Whether you are unwinding in the saloon or preparing a meal in the galley, you're never disconnected from your guests. For a livable vessel like Limanja, where the owner and his wife frequently host guests, this configuration enhances social interaction and the overall onboard experience. Moving past the galley, note the watertight door on the port side that leads out onto the upper deck. I really like this formal dining area up here, with the great use of the LED lighting that helps to create a relaxing atmosphere. Perfect for sitting down with your friends over a meal and a glass or two of your favourite tipple. Of course, it might be hard to envision it on a rainy day like today on the south coast of England, 
but you can imagine the view from this dining area when you are anchored in a picturesque bay somewhere. Now, if you subscribe to my channel, you probably would have seen my Weekend on a Bearing 92 video, and you will recognize my friend Bogdan, who works with Bearing Yachts. If you are interested in acquiring your own bearing and you live in Europe, then Bogdan is your man. I will leave his contact details in the video description. And if you have not seen my video from when I spent a weekend on a Bearing 92 with Bogdan and Tristan, the super yacht captain, then I will leave a link to that video also in the video description. Now let's head down into the accommodation area. This boat can sleep up to eight guests, including the owners with the owner's cabin and two double cabins down here with the ability to add another double berth in the Sky Lounge. The owner of this Bering 76 captains the boat himself, but whenever he wants to have a temporary captain on board, then he or she is accommodated in the spacious Sky Lounge, which we will take a look at in a minute. Let's start off by taking a look inside the spacious full beam owner's cabin, which of course has been finished to an incredibly high standard. Over on the starboard side is this area, which I personally would probably use as an area for my laptop so that I could stay up to date with all of the comments which are left on my videos. And yes, I do read every comment. A full beam owner's cabin would not be complete, of course, without a walk-in wardrobe. And the walk-in wardrobe on this bearing is huge. Over on the port side of the owner's cabin is a lounging area and check out the size of that flat screen TV on that bulkhead. What better place to sit and relax as you watch your favourite yacht tuber? In fact, the owner of this boat told me that he was introduced to the world of bearing yachts through one of my earlier videos. The ensuite in the owner's cabin is sizeable and there is a porthole to allow natural light into the area. I really love the finish and the decor in here and the whole ensuite really does feel incredibly spacious and roomy. Every detail in this owner's cabin has been meticulously crafted to meet the owner's precise specifications. That's one of the great things with bearings, the fact they work with you to create your own space. Just outside of the owner's cabin is this utility room that houses the washer and dryer as well as a sink. As mentioned earlier, the owner of this custom Bering 76 does live on board and has some great plans to journey across the Atlantic head over to Canada before turning south along the US coast and completing some of the Great Loop before heading down to the Caribbean. I did ask if he needed a deckhand and I'm waiting to hear back, so I will of course let you know. Of course, I'm kidding. I don't think my wife would be too impressed. As we exit the day head that is also used as a bathroom for the guests, we make a sharp turn to port where we find ourselves in the first of two double guest cabins. I've left the overhead lights off in this cabin so you can see just how much natural light comes into this area. Thanks of course to those large portholes on the port side. As we head back out into the corridor, you will notice an interesting area on the starboard side, which we will have a look at in a second. But first I want to show you around the forward VIP cabin. Webasto's central chilled water system expertly manages the climate control on board featuring reverse cycle heating for year-round comfort. The system is powered by dual Webasto V77 inverter chillers, boasting a remarkable total capacity of 154,000 BTU. So in the VIP cabin, the owner wanted a wider bed for his guests. So in order to get a wider bed in here, the bed is actually elevated up a little bit higher than what you'd typically expect to find in a Ford VIP cabin just because of the shape of the hull. So the actual breadth of this bed is huge, but also what that means is because of the elevation, you get stacks of storage space under here. And of course, because of the classification of the vessel, you have an escape hatch up here because these doors are watertight. Well, one of the doors is watertight and no prizes for guessing which one. It's worth mentioning that this vessel is a CE Category A vessel designed for seas up to 23 feet and winds exceeding Belfort Scale 8, meeting the most stringent European Union standards. 
The owner of this boat, instead of opting for another cabin in this space, has instead gone for the utilization of this area for more storage. As you can see, you can fit loads in here because this is obviously being used as a liverboard. And check out the amount of refrigeration space that you get, as well as all the storage space for your beers and other essential items that you're going to need or want on your long trips away. There we go, look, plenty of space in there. One of the great things about this Bering 76 is the fact that when she is sold, then if a new owner wanted to, then he or she could in fact turn this storage area back into a cabin because all of the fixtures and fittings behind the bulkheads needed for this area to be turned into a cabin are still there. The Bering 76 offers robust storage capacities, 788 gallons of fresh water, 585 gallons of grey water and 374 gallons of black water. That's 3,582, 2,660 and over 1,700 litres respectively. Let's head up onto the Sky Lounge from the main deck. As mentioned earlier in the video, the Sky Lounge can also be used as a captain's cabin, or if an owner prefers, can be transformed into another guest cabin, as all of the fixtures needed for the transformation are in place, but of course are out of sight. I like the fact that this opening can be shut if, for example, you are navigating at night and you want to ensure that no light will enter the pilot's house as and when the Sky Lounge is in use. As we step into the pilot house of the Bering 76, you're immediately greeted by panoramic views thanks to the expansive windows that surround you. For example, let me take you over onto the port side of the pilot house where your guests can sit and enjoy the view. And wow, what a view, thanks to the size of this window. As you can see, it also has an opening that allows you to let lots of fresh air into this space as and when you need it. But it's not just about the views, this is the nerve center of the boat, equipped with cutting edge navigation and electronics to ensure a safe and smooth journey. Starting with radar, we have dual Furuno radars, complemented by Furuno's six foot open array antennas and black box TZT BB systems. These are displayed on three 24 inch Poseidon HD monitors. For depth and underwater topography, the Furuno depth finder and dual transducers provide accurate readings of the seabed. The Furuno SC30 satellite compass and GPS receiver ensure you're always on course, while the Furuno FI70 data organizer and Air Max 220WX weather station keep you informed about environmental and weather conditions. Of course, safety is paramount, and that's why we have the Furuno FA50 AIS Class B transponder and Navpilot 711C control unit. For seamless communications, we've got dual ICOM VHF radios and emergency GPS enabled EPIRB. Plus, you can stay connected offshore with Glomex's 4G dual SIM system. And remember, if you need to update any of your maritime electronics, then be sure to check out my maritime stores on Amazon. You'll find the links in the video description. Now that we've finished having a look around the pilot's house and before I take you down into the engine room in the crew quarters, let's head out onto the boat deck that is also the sun deck. There are two life rafts on Le Manja and both of them can carry eight people. The other one can be found on the port side of the vessel. And remember, if you're thinking of planning your own long distance adventure, I'd recommend Ian McNeil's Circumnavigation and Ocean Passage Making. You'll find the link for that book with a discount code in the video description. The ES 1750 steelhead crane has a lifting capacity of, you have guessed it, 1,750 pounds. This sun deck is a great place for entertaining your guests or for just sitting and enjoying the view. The high guard rails are an important safety feature and ensure that you can still use this area even if the sea state isn't ideal. And when the weather is bad, this opening can be secured shut. Now let's head down into the crew accommodation and engine room. 
The aft crew cabin has a Vetus freshwater toilet, Webasto air conditioning system and bunk beds. And I'm pleased to report that there's plenty of headroom down here. So the owner of this boat is actually going to have all of this equipment behind some cabinetry. Uh, same over here on the starboard side, all of that is going to be uh, behind some cabinetry, it's going to be made up. And this is where we're here, it's going to turn into a galley. The crew cabin also has a flat screen LCD TV and a fusion stereo. As we enter the engine room, the heart of this vessel, you'll find twin Cummins QSL 9SW engines, each delivering 404 horsepower at 2100 RPM. These are medium continuous duty rated engines, turbocharged and seawater after cooled with a combined total power of 808 horsepower. They're controlled by Glendinning EEC4 electronic engine controls viewable on dual color displays in the pilot's house. The engines are paired with ZF W325 marine transmissions and SeaTalk ST300 shafts, turning five bladed propellers. For maintenance, there's a reverso oil change system for both engines and gearboxes, and dual Raycar fuel filters ensure a clean fuel supply. Now let's talk about the range. This vessel boasts an impressive range of over 4,000 nautical miles, cruising at a speed of 9 knots with a maximum speed of 11.5 knots. Fuel capacity, well she carries a substantial 5,318 gallons or 24,178 litres of fuel. Steering is managed by a data electro-hydraulic power system with emergency manual tiller options. The rudders are six square foot airfoils mounted on stainless steel rudder stock and protected against galvanic corrosion by zinc anodes. There are two Onan generators, one at 22.5 kW and another at 13.5 kW, both enclosed in sound shields. But what do you think of this engine room? Let me know in the comments below. So in summary, what would I say about this boat? Well, La Manger is a vessel that truly embodies the essence of an explorer yacht. It's not just about the long range capabilities or the robust engineering, it's also about the thoughtfulness in design. This boat is built for those who not only want to reach distant horizons, but also want to do so in a setting that really feels like home. The engine room is a testament to the vessel's technical prowess, but it's the additional features like the Webasto climate control systems and the advanced Furuno navigation equipment that round out the package. And let's not forget the CE Certificate Class A rating, which assures you that this vessel is built to withstand challenging sea conditions. It's a boat that doesn't just take you places, it does so while offering a level of comfort and safety that makes the journey as remarkable as the destination. So thanks for joining me on this tour. I'd like to say a massive thank you to the owner for allowing me to come on board and get this footage to show you around. I'd also like to say a big thank you to Bearing Yachts for helping to facilitate this visit. And remember, if you have got access to a boat you'd like me to feature on my YouTube channel, then feel free to get in contact with me. You'll find my contact details in the video description, and I'll leave my contact details on the screen now. And don't forget to come and find me on Instagram if you'd like to know what I'm up to in between filming. Until next time, fair winds and following seas. I'd like to say a massive thank you to those of you who have decided to become a member of my YouTube channel. I really appreciate the support. Think of YouTube's channel membership as their version of Patreon. As I pay for these trips myself, your monthly pledge, which costs a few dollars a month, really does help. If you're interested in becoming a member, then click on the link in the video description. Remember earlier on in the video, I told you about a video that I uploaded recently, which showed me, Tristan, the super yacht captain and Bogdan spending the weekend on a Bering 92. Well, if you look in front of you now on the left hand side of your screen, you'll find the link for that video. Please watch it and let me know what you think and I'll see you on the next one.